Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm going to start this video with a little bit of trim work on the uh, pallet wood pocket screw cabinet. Uh, this little piece here is going across the bottom and will actually provide a little bit of rigidity to the uh, front of the cabinet as well as a little bit of a lip for the drill bits down there. Okay, so we're just going to put that down here to dry. I want to bring my attention to this piece. This piece is going to go across the top, and I think I want to put some kind of a curve here. And I'm not sure what. I think I got this figured out. I, uh, I want the curve to start at an inch, which is the width of this ruler. So I've put a nail at an inch. I'm just going to take this rule and bend it to where it just passes the, the knot here and draw the curve. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're going to finish this uh, drill press build up today. The first thing I'm going to do is fit the backs. I went out to my shed and got that piece of plywood that I thought was there. <laughs> I kind of uh, jokingly thought it was there. It wasn't there anymore. I had used it uh, to actually build something in the shed to hold up something. So I had some scraps of T111, so we're going to have a T111 back. So what I did is I went down to the uh, uh, basement and cut them rough and then we'll fit them here now hey guys all right I'm jumping around a little bit I'm down in the basement now doing those rough cuts that I told you about I just wanted to show a little clip of me doing that uh, these are the pieces of t111 just you know this is a simple process you take some measurements you uh, cut them on the table saw I like to sneak up on the cut so I am cutting to the uh, waist side of the marks I made and I might do a little trimming with uh, some hand planes or a sander, depending on what I need to get them to fit properly. But here's just a quick view of how I did that. Hey guys, as I mentioned, one of the methods of fitting these would be with my sander. I don't think I've shown you my rigid uh, oscillating sander yet, so here is uh, that in action. When you really just got to take a 64th or something off, this thing really does the job for you. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. It oscillates and it uh, has a nice flat table, so I get a good cut. Uh, just wanted to show you this process. Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, let's see how we did. We went, just went down to the basement and uh, trimmed these babies up, these backs here. So let's start at the bottom. We got the width right. Looks like we got the uh, length pretty darn right too. Now let's see how the middle went. Nice tight fit. Pocket screws will take care of that one fine. Can we go three for three? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, well, the width isn't right. Let's see about the other side here. Looks like we got to do a little adjustments on the uh, width of this one. You guys saw me use my uh, sander yesterday, so I am not going to move the camera to get that. I'm going to take it to the belt sander and take maybe a 30 second off.
Okay, well, as you can see, the top is now fitting. I fear I went too far. It looks like my belt sander. Put a huge bevel. Let's see if I can show you what happened here. As you can see on the bottom, looks like we have a pretty good gap now. What happened when I was going across the sander, I sanded more in the middle and less on the ends, and I didn't realize I was taking that space out. Maybe you can't see this. Let me pick it up for you. I don't know if you can see this little gap here or not. I'm going to still pocket screw it in and see how the gap looks. There are other ways to fix this, maybe with uh, some creative uh, gluing. Um, all right, I'm going to set up to do the pocket screws next. Okay, so we're just doing the pocket screws now. And literally, I'm just going to go right around this board. Two on each end and two in the middle. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so there you have it. I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen to each side. Hey guys, welcome back. All right, uh, I finished cutting all the pocket holes and <laughs> I can't believe I did this, but you know, when you're filming these videos, it's pretty easy to make more mistakes than normal. Don't get me wrong, I make mistakes all the time. Um, some of them get edited out. Sometimes I show you what I do. Uh, this one I'm going to show you because what I did was kind of something I laughed about in the previous video. In one of the three boards where I was cutting the pocket screws, I cut them on the show side. So the middle board now is going to have the line showing in the middle. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a screw up, there's no doubt about it. I really don't care. Obviously, I'm going to have to sand the Sharpie marks off. I'm not going to bother cutting a new board. If this was something I was building uh, out of better woods, obviously, I would have to make this fix and build a new piece. Since this is going to hold drill bits in my shop, I'm okay with it. I actually will laugh at it and every time I take a drill bit out of the center cabinet here now, I'll give, give myself a little chuckle. But, to be perfectly honest, anybody can make this mistake. I don't do pocket screws a lot and I just wasn't thinking and you got to put the board in the jig the proper way. I put it in the right way on the top one, the right way on the bottom one, and in the middle one, for some reason, I reversed it. Um, I like to blame the camera every time I make a mistake these days because it is a distraction to film these videos, and I have made a few mistakes trying to make sure I am properly doing the filming, but I was already off camera when I made that mistake, so I'm not letting myself use that excuse there. I just flat out screwed it up. So anyway, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and get these things screwed in. Now I have these clamps. Now is the time to use any clamps you got. These are made by Rockler, again. Just a uh, tool I own, I purchased myself. It works well with pocket holes. Um, but this particular clamp will allow me to get the back perfectly flush. So I put one on there, and I put one on here. Just 
do a little bit of finesse work. holding them flush there and I can just kind of tap around as I go and get some screws set here. Once a few are set we're in good shape. All right we're going to do a little four times speed here. Uh, you know the, the pocket screw process is a little tedious. Uh, the clamps hold it fairly flush and then what I'm doing is taking the mallet and tapping it flush before I put a screw in at each point. And you just do this around the board until all the screws are in and then repeat for the other two boards. Uh, when this is done, the three backs screwed in like that make for a very, very strong case. Uh, I'll go back to normal speed here now to finish up. Those, scram those clamps actually work really nice. I'm not sure I need as many holes as I cut here either. So as I finish up uh, with the uh, bottom piece, I moved on and did the middle and top piece the exact same way. Uh, from here we're going to move on to the trim pieces. Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, as you can see we got the backs on. Um, this is a very sturdy case now, I will tell you that. I did put a little piece of trim here. This piece of trim is going here on the top. Just like that. Kind of gives it a nice little touch. And uh, it seems to want to hold itself, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that in, put a couple clamps on, and I'll put the screws in later. Just a thin coat. Didn't want that squeeze out a little on any other. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to finish this thing up. The last piece is going to be a cap. And to keep with our pallet wood and scrap wood, uh, I found this piece of wood on a construction site actually. Um, now a little word of caution, you know, pallets, like I said in my pallet video, they can be free, but they're not necessarily free. So if you ask and, and you can take them, great. The T111 that I used for the back, that was part of the shed I built, so that was my scrap, so that's fine. Uh, a third way to get scrap is, you know, at construction sites. I, uh, I live in the Washington, D.C. area in, in suburban Maryland, and there's building going on here all the time. And, you know, it costs money to dump stuff. And if you politely go up and ask guys sometimes when you see a pile that has a lot of cutoffs like this, a lot of times they'll say go ahead and take it, sometimes they won't. Um, but ask. You can't just go grab the stuff. Um, but sometimes, you know, they got to pay to dump it. They'll let you take it. This came from a, a job site. This is, a, you know, the beauty of this is that this is a 1x6. You know, you get it at any Home Depot. It's 39 and a half inches long. What I want to do is make a top and a bottom for this that will go here. You know, so we'll have a top flush to the back with an overhang. That's, you know, <laughs> looks like I'm getting lucky here. That's exactly one inch. Let's see what this is. Yeah, our cabinet actually comes out at four and a half inches. 
but we all know a one by six is five and a half. So I'm getting a perfect one inch reveal here. I'll do a one inch on either side. So I need two inches longer than our cabinet. Our cabinet is 16 and, oh, 16 and three quarters, 16 and seven eighths, something in there. So we want to do something uh, 18 and three quarters, we'll say. That'll give it, you know, it doesn't matter if it's an inch, if it's, you know, 11 sixteenths, 15 sixteenths, the overhang. As long as it's equal, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can see here, I don't know if you can see here, I put this in the last video, this piece of curved trimming here. As much, I had a hard time clamping this in, I think you saw. You know, pallet wood is a pain in the butt. This one just fought me. And after I got it all clamped in, you can see it sunk in about a sixteenth of an inch. That is too much to plane away or, or sand away. So we, we have two options here. I mean, and I've made several mistakes on this thing, and at the end of this video, I'll go over all the mistakes. Because I'm painting this, I can fill that and paint it, we'll be fine. I'll show you how I do that. It's just, I don't know if you can see this here before we get a comment down below. Yeah, I know there's another boo-boo here, and we'll fix it. So I'm gonna go down in the basement, I'm gonna cut these at, what did I say? Let's measure, measure twice, don't cut stupid. 16 and three quarters plus two, we want 18 and three quarters. I'll be back with those cuts in a minute. Hey everyone, uh, I just went down to the basement and I cut these two pieces and I just got them loosely sitting here. So you can kind of see what I mean by a cap here. There's an inch reveal going around the sides and the front. The back is flush obviously so the cabinet can sit to the wall. I will now get myself set up here to cut the chamfers. We're going to cut a 3 8 inch chamfer around the front and the two sides. On, you know on the top here and on the bottom here so that it has a chamfered reveal like that to kind of show you an entrance into the cabinet uh, I have this uh, Should know who makes this thing but, You know they should write their name on it if they want me to say who it is um, You all probably this is an Incra ruler. This is the uh, thing that has the billion little holes in it um I don't know that this is necessary for a pallet wood project, but you know, let's make some accurate three eighths lines. Uh, this is a very difficult tool to use if you wear glasses. I'm gonna be honest, I can't read anything on it. I've done that board already and I made about four mistakes trying to figure out this little hole. But now that I think I have it worked out, if you figure the tool out, it's pretty darn easy. All right, here's what I needed to do. I needed to put a depth line because my chamfer needs somewhere to go on the top and the bottom. I did not use the anchor tool for this. I went with this very high-tech method of just taking my finger and finding what I consider half and scribing a line and just transferring it down. And I'm sure I'm a little off, but I'm okay with that. It's a chamfer. All right, guys, here's a little bit better view of what I'm doing. So you got a line here. You probably can't see I have another depth line here. And I'm just taking, I got my Veritas, uh, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the block plane with the uh, angled, uh, again, I don't know the name of it. I'll, I'll link it. And I'm just, uh, Slowly working to the lines. Looks like I went a little deep at the beginning. Not gonna kill me. I'll sand this up, it'll look great. Let me flip it around and get a good view of how these guys work. I really like them. Um, 
I'm going to take a chance. I didn't get any blowout here that's going to hurt me. I really, really should be coming this way so that any blowout here happens. I don't want any blowout in the back. Um, let's see what happens here. I'll try... Uh, You know, I'll just try pulling. position the camera. So we have two bevels here, so now we got to work this one. And let me get this out of my way. I think I'll be in the right position. And I'm not really about worried about the spelch here now because I'm going with the grain. The spelch being the, 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 the cutout. When we were doing the uh, end grain, we were getting chunks like this. Now we're getting nice shavings. It's because we're going down the grain. This is actually very fun to do. That's what we're working can be very enjoyable. thick shaving so I'm getting a, a nice flat chamfer I got a nice point there that meets up and I got a nice point there that's almost there at the bottom so let's give it one two three more on this side a little bit up and there we have a nice chamfer and as you can see Nice chamfer all the way around. Went a little far there, but you know, that's at the back. It's going to be at the bottom of our base. So life is good. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, a little bit different view here. I'm in the front of the table. Uh, I want to put the uh, final piece of trim. You can see I put this piece of trim on last night, glued it up. So now what we're going to do is put this piece on right here. Like, and I don't, I don't have to go to the back to straighten it. like that. So put a little glue up there. I don't want a lot of glue up there. You know, this is a shelf that's going to hang on the wall that, you know, this this top piece has no structural value, so there's no sense going bananas here and causing squeeze out that would just create more problems down the road.
going to put a few pins in this thing. Okay, that ain't going anywhere now. We'll just put a little weight up here. Not the light. 25 pounds of kitty litter to act as a clamp. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. This is the end of the build video for this cabinet. I will do one more quick video where I sand it and paint it just so you can see the finished product. Uh, but I'm going to cut this video off here because it's editing out to be about a half an hour long and I don't want to go past that. Uh, really quick, I want to just talk about a few of the mistakes I made because I said I would mention them. The big one was the center panel. I actually put the pocket screws on the wrong side of the board. Like I said, in a real world, if you're building this for anywhere but in your shop, you have to replace this board. That's a mistake you can't fix. Uh, the little screw hole here where the pocket screw came through, that's an easy fix. Just fill it. Um, this trim piece here where I have this little bit, it's about a sixteenth where the, the clamp pushed in after, you know, it, when, I, when I clamped it, it was flush. And before the glue set, the clamp shifted, I guess, and, and it just moved in a little bit. You know, it can happen. You know, this pallet would, you know, and it's actually sticking out a little bit there. When it moved here this way, it popped out there. That I can sand down flush. This I'll have to fill. So when I do the uh, paint and sand video, I'll show you how I fix that. The one other thing I wanted to talk about was the gap that we had. It's actually at the top. That'll be an easy fix. When I paint that, uh, I will take a little glue and some sandpaper and, and excuse me and some sawdust and lunge it in there. If I have to, I could caulk it because I'm painting it, but I don't think it's that big. Um, and the one last thing is somebody's going to ask why I left the pocket screws here on the top of the shelf revealed. Um, and my answer is twofold. One, it's a pocket, or excuse me, it's a pallet project. So, you know, the side of this cabinet has holes where, you know, nails were in the pallet. I, I'm not fixing those. I mean, I'm just going to paint it and it's going to hang in my shop. Craig makes plugs to go here. If I wanted to plug them, I could buy the pine plugs, put them in there, sand them flush, paint it, you wouldn't see them. I just don't see the need for this project. There'll be drill bits sitting there blocking them. Now, obviously, on the top and the bottom piece, these caps are hiding the uh, pocket screws. They're not visible on the top and bottom. So when you build a cabinet, you, you plan to cover the pocket screws wherever possible. Um, I could have put them on the bottom coming up. I, I just think... The angle of the screw going this way provides more strength. I could be putting some heavy drill bits in here. This could be holding seven, eight pounds. Like I said, this cabinet, this is solid. I mean, this thing is, it's solid. I mean, you, there's 80 pocket screws in this thing. It's not going anywhere. Um, so it'll hold the weight. I, I could have put them the other way, but when it's hanging on my wall, I think you're going to see them more on the bottom than on the top. It's going to hang at about this height. So that's another reason that I have them on the top. And quite frankly, because it's a pallet project, I really don't care that they're there. They, they're not bothering me. So you always have to decide what is your project for and is it okay. For this project, that's okay for me. So that's that. Um, thanks for watching. I will post the paint project Monday or Tuesday after the weekend when I paint it this weekend. And uh, we'll move on to the next project. Thanks for watching, everybody.